John, you just attended a side event here at the 39th session of the CFS on enabling agricultural cooperatives a paradigm shift for economic and social inclusion. What were the main outcomes of this event? Uh, the main outcomes uh, were well, basically the, uh, the discussion was focused largely on how do you promote more sustainable and independent cooperative businesses. Um, and a lot of points were raised along this line. But I think the underlining, uh, one, of, one of the major points was raised is that sustainability requires some ability for the cooperative business to finance its own operations. And this requires the members of the cooperative to come up with a mechanism that they can use to build funds from their own resources and from external resources to finance the business operations. Um, once a cooperative becomes more financially self-reliant, able to manage its own financial affairs, it becomes by definition more independent and also more sustainable. Um, there were other uh, topics that were discussed at the uh, conference and uh, one of them uh, included uh, the use of more bottom-up approaches to cooperative development. One often thinks of a cooperative as a big organization. It doesn't have to be big. In fact, some of the more successful cooperatives uh, always started with a very small group basis then gradually building upon that. And so, um, cooperative developers need to think of maybe a variety of approaches to um, uh, working with cooperatives, both using small group approaches as well as larger group approaches. The issue of uh, using uh, new developments in information and communications technology was also addressed. Um, and uh, the feeling was that there's great potential there for uh, the use of some forms of ICT to empower uh, cooperative members, cooperative managers, and cooperative leaders uh, to um, link up more better with the uh, national um, economy, uh, to link up more better, uh, more efficiently with, with uh, buyers of uh, products, uh, to assist them in, in marketing their products, etc. Other recommendations that were uh, discussed in terms of uh, member countries. Uh, one was that uh, more case studies should be done of successful cooperative businesses. And by successful cooperative businesses, we mean ones that are largely sustainable, largely self-financing, and profitable. Um, people often don't understand what it means, what that means, successful, unless they see it. There need to be, I think, more studies done of what these cooperative businesses, these successful businesses, look like. What kind of mechanisms do they, do they, do they use to involve their members more actively, to get their members to invest in the cooperative business, to make sure that the cooperative services that are provided fit the members' needs. Another one was on proposals for FAO, um, because we, uh, we did discuss a number of one of which was the, uh, the fact that FEO no longer has a technical capacity to address some of the uh, member country needs in terms of cooperative uh, technical assistance. And uh, there is a need, we think, uh, or at least some of the uh, discussion members think, uh, to uh, reactivate uh, FEO's ability to do this, to establish some kind of a technical unit within FAO that addresses some of these concerns. Um, and also to assist in uh, uh, the uh, in carrying out of some of these case studies on successful activities and models. Agricultural cooperatives, key to feeding the world. That was the formal wording of yesterday's World Food Day. It has been chosen to highlighting the role of cooperatives in improving food and nutrition security and contributing to the eradication of hunger. In the run-up, 
for this year's World Food Day, FAO's Global Forum on Food Security and Nutrition facilitated an online discussion on rural cooperatives and producer organizations. Which concrete findings did you get out of it? Why are cooperatives so important in improving food and nutrition security and contributing to the eradication of hunger? Uh, in terms of uh, concrete findings, I suppose that the, the most important one is that I, there was general recognition and understanding of that uh, farmer organizations, uh, various types, you know, informal groups, formal cooperatives, uh, farmer producer organizations, uh, unions, etc., do have an important role to play because they are a form of social capital, rural social capital in which people get together to solve their own problems. Um, and that these social organizations, which are also economic organizations, because they have to survive economically um, as businesses, um, are extremely important in uh, allowing uh, rural producers to access uh, resources, to access markets, to improve their own production, their own food production capabilities and uh, um, also to uh, increase their own incomes, which allow them as consumers to uh, have the ability uh, to buy more products, to uh, consume more food, etc. Another point that was raised in the, in the discussion was uh, the problems created by uh, excessive government intervention in cooperatives, agricultural cooperatives, usually done through financial assistance, uh, which created a sort of dependencies that tended to undermine the cooperative's independence and also self-reliance as a business. Um, and so the feeling was that in terms of a recommendation uh, to member governments and to FAO, um, was that in the future, technical and financial assistance that is provided to uh, um, developing countries uh, in the field of cooperative development probably should include some kind of a proviso uh, which ensures that this assistance will not undermine the ultimate objective of this exercise which is to produce or to promote more financially sustainable and independent uh, cooperative businesses. Thank you, John. Renata, as the moderator of FAO's forum, you are an expert on online discussions. Could you share your experience with this medium? How has it developed? What are the strengths? What are the challenges? The forum started in 2007 as a means to share knowledge between FAO and the, the academic, academic community. Uh, but since then it has involved uh, quite a lot, so now we have uh, over 4,000 members that are from a variety of affiliations and uh, uh, coming from all countries in the world. Um, so uh, it is now more regarded as a way to engage a broader uh, group of stakeholders into global dialogues related to technical and political issues. Uh, for instance, the CFS, the Council of World Food Security, has used the forum to uh, broaden the discussion on the, on the global strategic framework. And uh, the high-level panel of experts has used the forum to discuss about and focus uh, the, the, uh, on their uh, reports they are preparing for the CFS. So it's, it is evolving in this direction as a way to allow stakeholders to take part in global dialogues. And I think this is one of the main strengths of, of the forum, that it of, offers a cost-effective and sustainable way to engage a broader set of people who would not otherwise normally reach or be reached by official channels. And still we have um, challenges, of course. Uh, one of the challenges I would mention is to really uh, mainstream this kind of activity into the FAO more. Actually, the case. Um, another challenge, I guess, is also to demonstrate the value added of such type of interactions, uh, which is uh, uh, normally quite clear to those who take part 
into, into the interactions, but it's not uh, uh, straightforward or not always straightforward to understand for those who are outside. Um, and also another challenge is also with such a diverse number, a community of people, we also have to uh, be sure and keep abreast of the expectations of such a diverse audience of members. The Global Donor Platform works largely virtual too, uh, with its 34 members dispersed over different countries and continents. Do you see a common modus operandi which we could enhance? Uh, yes, I think there are synergies between the Ethics Forum and the Global Platform. Um, one synergy, one common activity could be uh, organizing online discussions that focus on the thematic areas the Global Donor Platform is working on. You know there are priorities you set up each year, so we can address those priorities within online discussions, that, and this would allow your members to also benefit from greater outreach of their priorities and see what the uh, global communities are think of feedback, what kind of feedback they give. Um, I think another synergy would be, uh, depending on the needs of your members, to organize, we also organize targeted consultations, which include only a specific area of work or a specific geographic area, and this could be another area. And also I think if we get more and closer partnership, also we can facilitate uh, the Global Donor Platform in reaching different FAO departments and divisions, which are concerned such a big organization so to build linkages between your work and the Okay, thank you very much John and Renata for this interview. It's highly appreciated.